So let's get started talking about price action. Now, to really understand price action means you need to study what happened in the past, then observe what is happening in the present, and then predict where the markets might go. Now, price action is among the most popular trading concepts. A trader who knows how to use price action the right way can often improve his performance and his way of looking at charts significantly. Now, I, on the whole, am a price action trader. I don't use indicators and oscillators. Now, however, there's still a lot of misunderstanding and half-truths circulating that confuse traders and set them up for failure. So, what exactly is price action? Well, it's a favorite among short and medium-term traders. Price action trading brings together an interesting mix of information and different views. These include historic price patterns, technical indicators, and investors' ability to read the markets. Many investors see the stock market as an information exchange where all views and strategies meet and try to arrive at a fair price. As many of the decisions associated with price action trading are subjective, what one investor may see as a breakout, another may see as a potential price reversal. Compare and contrast this with pure technical analysis where you effectively ignore the experience of investors in favor of cold, hard trends. Now, human nature dictates that futures and commodity prices will be extremely volatile. The overbought situation are often created of fear and greed while panic selling can take over an event on disappointing news. These are types of scenarios where price action investment strategy can prove extremely lucrative. But ultimately price action comes down to looking and reading what price is telling you on a chart. It's not looking at economic indicators and not looking at news and the headlines. It's not about reading technical analysis or using technical analysis, because let's clear this up. Technical analysis could be called chart analysis, because technical analysis is anything and everything we do on a price chart. So simply looking at a bare line chart, even though it doesn't help as much, is technical analysis. Now, don't mix this up with oscillators and indicators, okay. reading a chart or technical analysis could simply be called what? Chart analysis. So we here talk about swing patterns, support and resistance, wave analysis, trend lines, moving averages, to name a few different chart patterns. Candlesticks and bars are also very popular on charts. For example, when a chart is about to crash through a support level, it is unlikely to do it in one fell swoop. You may see an index or commodity contract price initially bouncing off support levels as investors look to benefit from the short-term sell-offs. As short-term traders sell into the bounce, buying interest begins to wane and sellers take control. So we've said a mouthful here. Let's go over and look at some live charts to see if we can put this into some sensible understanding. Okay, right here, we're looking at a live chart for the Euro New Zealand dollar. Now, I've highlighted on here a couple things that have happened. Okay. We see price coming down here on the right hand, left hand side after it's coming down off of a significant, it's coming down a significant downtrend. We can see that price bounced down here and then reversed. It bottomed out. Okay. Then it moved back up. Reverse back down, made some hit some minor resistance and move back up. Okay. That's all easy to observe on a chart, especially after the fact. But how do we observe this on our chart and make some sense out of it, especially when we're looking to trade this way? Okay. What happened back here? 
doesn't really help us much. Even what happened here doesn't help us much because we can only make our trades based on what's happening now. But reading price action and reading your chart is ultimately what's important. Now here on this Bitcoin chart, now we can see Bitcoin was relatively low back here. Okay, and we know it's gone up almost to 60,000 today. But this is just one of the examples that I set up. Now, all of these blue, purple dotted lines, gold lines on the chart are levels of support and resistance. These lines are drawn on our charts based on historic movement. Actually, let me open a chart and see. Let's take a look at my low chart layout. Let's go to Okay. Now, this is my analysis. This is the euro US dollar. And see all of these gold and red lines? These are levels of support and resistance. These have been on my charts for a very long time because your levels of support and resistance come from historical price movements. Now, this class today isn't about support and resistance. We do have whole classes on how to find and locate support and resistance and how to draw them on your charts. But looking at a chart and trying to interpret price action, well, if you're looking at a bear chart, you can see movement in the asset. But unless you know where that asset is in the longer term and how it's responded the last time it was at this pricing, it's hard for you to predict what's going to happen next. Because like here, we saw the euro, US dollar all the way down here. Okay. Now that's about the lowest it's been in in a while. Now the lowest the euro, US dollar has been is about 106. And that was significantly a while ago when the ECB was flooding the markets. But if we look at, now these are my own personal codings. But all of these lines have been drawn back when the last time, the time before and the time before when the euro was trading in this range. And I highlighted the peaks and the valleys and the important prices in that action and once you draw it on your chart, it's continued forward into the future. And these lines, these prices, or these levels, are important anytime the price is around that level. What this red line is up here is unimportant because price isn't there. What's only important to us are these. So these levels are not important because what we're concerned with is where we are today. But this helps us evaluating where we think the euro US dollar would go by simply looking at our chart and reading price action. Because we could see as price came down, let's go away from last week. And we can see here that this 117,726 was a very important bottom for the euro. Here, it started to move up, it came down bottom there. Here, bottom there again, bounced off. And so this tells us, by look, simply looking at our price, that the 117,725 is a very significant price level. And where do we see this? We see this by interpreting the price action on our charts. So if we see price coming back down to trade at this range, we're going to look to see what that price does as it comes down here. Now, at this price down here, 117.6, I mean, I probably would buy. And then we'll look at that price to bounce off here and come back up to the 118. But it's had a very serious problem for a while at 118 because the U.S. dollar has been quite strong. 
Now, this is using support and resistance. Now, I have dashed lines. I have dotted lines. I have red lines. I have thick lines. I have thin lines. I have blue lines. I have gold lines. These are my own personal color codes. They tell me how long ago, how important that line was, which was a major level, which was a minor level. And I need, you know, it's like a key to a map, a roadmap. You need to know what those keys are, but the keys are personal. Mine aren't published. You need to develop your own system. And then when we move away from just simply looking at support and resistance levels, we also come to chart patterns. Like here, we can see in Bitcoin a while ago, back in December, it developed a beautiful triangle. And this is where Bitcoin was stuck around $20,000 and wasn't able to break out. Here we finally got the breakout of this price, this chart pattern. And what has Bitcoin done? It's moved into a steady uptrend ever since. So by looking at our chart and seeing a, 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 just a simple pattern, we were able to understand how to read price action. Because now it's really easy for me to explain all this in clean cut charts. Because most people think the markets trade this way, but the markets are messy. You have to be able to look at your journey and figure out what's happening there. Because even though in class we teach you, especially trends and, and price movement, we teach you push, ease, push, ease, push, ease. But in, in reality, this is more like a market. So we have to be able to take the concept and be able to apply it to the reality. But sometimes price moves in beautiful stepping motions. Now, my explanation for this or my analogy for this is that price movement is completely random. Every price that puts on a chart is completely random. It's made up of millions of people doing millions of things around the globe. But there are certain times that price exhibits non-random behavior. And these are considered trends. And when we are, exist we are exhibiting this non-random behavior, we can then apply some simple understanding of rules to make smart, high probability trading action. Because if you look at my teaching diagram and then look at the reality, what do we have? We had a beautiful push, ease, push, ease, push, ease, higher highs and higher lows. Now, granted, this doesn't happen quite often. It doesn't happen all the time. But in my world of trading, these are the only trades I ever execute. Because I only want high probability trades. So when I can look and see what my chart is telling me, and I can read that, I use the rest to find entry points and exit points, but I don't use it anything else to make trading decisions. So how do you read price action charts? Eventually, the price will crash through support levels, often prompting an array of short selling. So how do we read these things? How do we see what's happening? Now, there are many different types of chart patterns we associate with price action trading. Some of these are fairly obvious, while others are open to interpretation. Once you understand what they really mean, you will start to notice them on the charts you look at every day. Now, some of these I, are very hard to spot. I don't use them, but it falls into price action. And that's bullish head and shoulders patterns. They take a long time to develop. They really work much better for stock trading 
stock investing than they really do short-term CFD trading because they take a very, very long time to develop. But when you see price trying to hit what we call a neckline, falling back down and a little bit farther than where it was and pushing back up to that same level and then coming back down, what is it? And this does occur quite often. It's really a bullish head and shoulders. But it's not as clean cut and easy to see. Then we have things like double bottoms, double tops. I don't use double bottoms and double tops because in our type of CFD trading, they happen way too often. So you don't want to go overboard on double bottoms and double tops because price will move down, move back up to resistance, touch it, and move back up. It's not enough to make a predictable trade. But then we go to one of my favorite, and that's triple bottoms and triple tops. When price moves down or reverse moves up, comes down, forms a bottom, moves back up and tries to hit that resistance again, falls off of it, and moves up to that resistance again. Now I have a triple bottom. Now that triple bottom tells me something about price. Now when I see price moving back to that resistance line that has fought that battle three times already, I'm saying, okay, it's either gonna bounce down, now I haven't made a decision yet, or it's gonna break through. If it breaks out or breaks through upward, I'm gonna look at some clues like volume to see if I have an opportunity. Is that bottoming over? Then we have a new one that we send to appear on our short-term charts quite often, and that's rounding bottom. So we don't have a resistance or support level, but we have a price range and it's rounded. For some reason, price moves up, it keeps falling down, moves up, falls back down, moves up, falls back down. But it's not exactly the same bottom, but we can see the semicircle developing. And then we go back to my favorites, which are wedges, pennants, flags, and of course, triangles. We have whole classes on just triangle trading. I was looking at my YouTube channel today and somebody was giving me some negative feedback saying that's not a, a, a triangle, that's a wedge. I know better than you. Well, to me, wedges, triangles are all the same thing. Whenever you have two lines converging at each other, to me, they form a triangle. The difference is an ascending, a descending, symmetrical triangle are the angles of the lines. But the same thing with a wedge. With a wedge, your upper and lower support are moving at different degrees. In an ascending and descending triangle, one is at a horizontal level and one's moving at a degree. And a symmetrical triangle, both the, 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 out, the points of the rectangle are moving at the same degree. I don't really care. Because I don't care about the tendency. I don't care about the characteristic because I can only be, because I'm a price action trader. I don't care about any of it. I care about seeing the breakout of price. I'm waiting for price to tell me what it's going to do. So the key to any successful price action trading strategy is to remove the peripheral noise, such as fundamental data, and look at price patterns, trends, and other forms of technical analysis. When combined with good old fashioned experience and a feel for the market, we combine with this to create very successful strategies. Don't forget, even if you open a position based on any of the following price action trading strategies, you can also use the technical data to set stop loss limits and target points. Because regardless of what you're doing, you have to calculate your risk management. Follow your risk management rules, take your risk reward ratio to even decide whether you can even make that trade. So one of the key aspects of price action trading when using support and resistance levels is the fact that once a support level is breached, it can turn into resistance or vice versa. So what do we see here? We could almost say we have a double bottom. Price moved down, hit a bottom, moved back up, came back down to support it, bounced back up, and here it broke out. When price was above, it flipped, this resistance level flipped to a support level. Now, would we have thought about at this point when price broke this level here of executing or considering 
a long trade, a buy. Well, we have to look at more to figure that out. But when price breaks through your resistance level, especially after bouncing off of it several times, there's a good possibility that we're going to move into an upward movement. One of the best ways to do this is to look for specific patterns in your charts. Indecision candles is one great strategy. Pin bar and inside bar combos are another. The pin bar and inside bar combo pattern is seen by many as one of the most powerful technical indicators. If you look towards the start of the chart, you can see an exchange rate bouncing off. Okay, so here we go. Our pin bar or a pin bar strategy is right here. Price broke through our support level, went up to resistance, came back down, and what do we got? We got the exhibition of three down candles, each with long pins, and we got an inside bar here which meant this whole bar was inside of the previous bar. And now we got our definite buy scenario. So this was the breakout we saw before. Ease back down. The support level held. I'm just trying to get my marks off of here for you. So many price action traders are extremely vigilant. They're always on the lookout for what is known as inside bars. You can recognize these by the emergence of a secondary bar within the body of the previous bar. So sometimes we refer to these as mother bars and baby bars. It's easier to find them if you think of a mother bar is a previous bar and a new bar which we call the inside bar, the baby bar, is fully contained within that mother bar. And it's of the opposite color. The primary bar is sometimes described as the mother bar and will often indicate a period of consolidation and potential turning points from key support and resistance levels. So it's important when this, because these bar patterns form all the time, but when you're looking at price action, when you see them, see what their relationship is to the support and resistance level. If they are directly on, above, or below that support and resistance levels, they are trying to tell you something. So it is only when you take the time to understand how bar patterns emerge and what they indicate that you're, you can position your trades. Don't forget, you also have to keep one eye on your stop loss limits and your risk management. So as you gather from all the information, price action trading is based around trends and momentum. The idea is simple. Once a trend changes, then the momentum often grows. It is only when a stronger or an opposing trend emerges that the direction changes again. In between these relatively strong trends, there are periods of consolidation, sideways trading action and price will often bounce off support and resistance levels. In re reality, price spends most of the time in congestion. Despite price spends the least amount of time in what we can define as a trend. Because you can move up without having a trend. Price can be moving sideways, bounce up, move up you know, a couple points, and then just start moving sideways again. It really ne it never formed any trend. So don't take action until with a trade until the market itself confirms your opinion. Being a little late in a trade is insurance that your opinion is correct. In other words, don't try to be an impatient trader. Now, there are numerous disadvantages and advantages of using price action trading strategies, and ultimately it comes down to how disciplined a trader you are. Some of these advantage, disadvantages, and I noted to you earlier, is I'm a price action trader. I only take high probability trades, but I may only get a handful of trades in a whole week. As you're effectively waiting for the price trend to cut through the support level or shoot through a resistance level, and you can end up with a relatively low number of trades. 
this is not an issue if you're disciplined, but frustration can get the better of traders. Unfortunately, traders using price action trading are often caught out by significant shifts in the market. This often means prices do not return to their preferred trading levels. For those lacking discipline, they can end up chasing price higher and higher. Meanwhile, for those who are able to remain focused on the technical situation, opportunities will emerge. Many of the strategies we mentioned above be overcautious while waiting for a definitive change in trend. There will be times when interday prices could spike above resistance or below support. But this is why we have multiple trading strategies. You can be a price action trader as well as an oscillator trader. You can have many different strategies. So when you see the markets telling you something or prices moving and giving you some clues, you can apply a different strategy to see if it offers you a trading position. So as we touched, while price action trading is based on technical analysis of the reading of the situation, it's not always cut and dry. A lot of times after hitting a new high, an exchange rate will fall back as a result of profit taking. This is a rule of thumb. When price moves up, there's always going to be a point where buyers or sellers say, I'm going to put my profit in my pocket. It means the price will ease back down. Doesn't mean it's reversing. But don't get shifted into the scenario just because people are taking profit. The price is going to fall and reverse. One of my key clues to everything is volume. Low volume tells me to go away. It means price is stuck. So what's the difference between price action and technical analysis? The basic difference is that price action incorporates both technical analysis and human input. Effectively, you are monitoring emerging trades and reading these with varying degrees of discipline and experience. In other words, it gives you the freedom to set your own set of rules. While there's a degree of human input with regards to price action trading, there's also a need to be disciplined and even if you margin miss out on several trades. The idea is blunt. When the turning point occurs and momentum builds for a new trend, you will be there. So keep in mind price action. Price action is one of the simplest ways to trade, but you always need to develop your risk reward ratios, your target prices, and stop losses. Don't chase the trades, let the trades chase you. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Have a great weekend. And whatever holidays you celebrate, enjoy the spring holidays. Bye now.